Okay, so we are calling we have all the meeting board across. Um meetings already getting we already called the meeting to order, okay. So um, Ed has sent out the meeting minutes from September 13th and our special meeting on October 4th. Um, I had reviewed them, they look wonderful. So thank you very much for writing those up. Um, did everyone else have an opportunity to review? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to accept the meeting minutes. Second. So moved. Uh, Everyone in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Meeting and accepted. Um, so um, the next thing on the agenda, well, actually not on the agenda, uh, but before I get started, and unfortunately the people I wanted, oh, there's Catherine. Hey, Catherine. Hello. <laughs> um, Catherine, I wanted to thank you and Donna for um, attending the Heritage Day. That was wonderful. Um, thank you so You're much. Um, yeah, um, that was fantastic. So I heard it went, it was a very nice day. Yeah, round of applause. <laughs> um, did, did everything go smoothly? Everything went well. Um, the the bubbles and the ball bouncy balls were a big hit. So thank you for buying those. Yeah. Um, they, they were very popular. Um, but yeah, we had a we had a bunch of people come by and interested and looked at our our brochures and um, looked at the schoolhouse display and got bouncy balls and bubbles and. Did the little hat craft. I think it went very well. Cool. Well, that's good to hear. That's wonderful. Can I make a little sidebar? Yes, we can. I was looking on my computer, you know, and I'm looking at the news page, you know, have the little news items splash by, flash by, and in between you have little other newsy things. And it said the 10 most interesting caves in New England. And guess which was number two? Upton Cave. Okay. Yes. And they had a great write up about it. And I would, huh? <laughs> I don't even know. But it wasn't as interesting as ours. I mean, I read the write up and we were the only like man made cave. The others were all like um, openings, you know, between granite rocks and things like that. And it was very interesting, and I thought people are going to be running here to see it. Yeah, <laughs> you might have traffic down here. Right. Oh, that's cool. That's exciting. You keep those brochures handy. Yeah. All right, I'll just explain the thing. Um, okay, so the next item on the agenda is the treasurer's report. Any update or I, you know, I asked for it and I told him, you know, every second Wednesday of the month is when we meet. I'd really like to have a count, you know, before the meeting still length. Well, I did get one last month, of, like the evening after or this evening of a meeting, but when I got home, it was said to be at 11 p.m. Okay. So, um, well, we haven't spent anything or whatever, so it should be remain the same. We have a thousand dollars in our general account, but that's a preservation and historical work account, um, and nine hundred and seventeen dollars in in the donation account. Okay. So. Did you get that all? Yeah. Okay. Cool. I'm not writing this down because it's the same as last month. Same as last month. Getting all updates. Okay. Sounds good. Um, so the next item on the agenda is um, an update on the letter for the Department of Conservation and Recreation concerning the North Farm and the CCC camps uh, and the tour that we had, the CCC camp tour. But I don't think. Anyone is uh, here who would be able to give an update on that? So I guess we'll pass for that. So the, the walking tour got canceled. Oh, the walking tour got canceled. Okay. Due to yeah. one of the 17 in a row weekends of rain. Yes. <laughs> I, uh, I texted 
Bill Taylor that Saturday morning was a Sunday towards our. I didn't even think that until so Jesse had canceled, she immediately did it. Okay. Okay, good. So now are we going to reschedule or just we for next year or something? Wasn't well, discussed. Okay. I would still say we'd like to see the site, but uh, whether we can get Bill to come up with a. Yeah, he said he does it, what, the fourth Sunday of every month, anyways? Oh. Yeah. So. <clears throat> A simple email that he might get a date that he's doing it. And if it's right. nice, but we can now uh, we can join. Him. Okay. So, yeah. So if if you if Ed if you want to reach out to Bill, could you just email the commission and just let people know if we're gonna have one? Okay. Um. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the Heritage Park sign. Um, so BBT had picked up the Heritage Park sign this week, I believe, or last week, and they're planning to return it on the 12th, which is tomorrow. Um, and the only thought I had about that is I don't know if um, Ed and I maybe should pop down to BBT and discuss the sign with them, or if we're just gonna pull up the man at it um, and do it. He things. is fully aware that he is to contact the two of us to discuss with the students and staff the details of the project before work begins. Okay, so he's gonna reach out to us before work begins. So I'd say wait another week or two because you know the students are on a two week cycle. When they're in the labs for two weeks, then they're in the classroom for a week or two weeks. And so it's a, his original suggestion that it would take them six weeks to make a sign and kind of chuckle. He knows best, so maybe it will. Okay. Yeah, yeah that sounds fast, six weeks. So I would wait another week or two before we worry about whether he's forgotten us or not. Okay. And I have not heard from them in regards to returning the sign, which he said he was supposed to do tomorrow. Okay. This is the shed is locked, and I had uh, Gary at the DBW open for him. Okay. And asked him to relock it when he left, so it's got to be reopened for him to put the sign back in. Okay. I vaguely recall somebody mailed me a key a year ago, but as I suspected at the time, I know I didn't the keys. That's okay. And okay. I don't usually lose things. The key, the key is in the um, the filing cabinet. Ed, by the way, the your key, the one that you were sent, is in the filing cabinet. Okay, uh, you just got it. Just so you know, I saw it on Thank you. whatever it was earlier in the week, so I just saw it then, so I know it's there. All right. So with that being said, maybe we should maybe we should reach out to. Then um, Derek, uh, reach out to Derek and mention we have a key if you need to. Gary's, you know, usually runs in town with cemeteries anyway, so they're probably with everyone. Okay, not a big deal. Not a big deal. Okay. I have his text for me. Okay. Gary, what's his last one? Yeah. Okay, I should, but I don't. Okay, not a problem. Just curious. Okay, cool. So let's see. The answer to Gary still works for me. <laughs> um, Gary, that's all I got in my phone. Okay, so <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is to discuss creating standard operating procedures to document historical properties before demolition. And provide responses from the Mass Historical Listserv. So, um, I had reached out to Mass Historic, and I got on the listserv, and I spoke to uh, two people actually: um, Betsy Hanula and Leo Green from Andover, and um, they responded to my request um, concerning the formal documentation for processes of the historical properties. And they both said that they 
use of form 12 form B, um, to document that property. So I found that form. Um, so I think going forward, we should probably use the form B. One thing I should confirm though is I think this form B looks very familiar or similar to the one we're already using. I've, I've seen the, the form that we use to document properties and it looks very similar to the form B. So maybe I should analyze that and so you ensure you have that it's the same. The property and then you have you know, the building structure, what it's made out of, the size, and yeah. things like that. Yeah, it looked so, look pretty similar uh, to what we had. Uh, and, they, and they said it's very old form like from the second piece. Yeah. So the kind of looks like. So, um, so we might be in compliance. Um, but I'm, I'm going to give myself an action item for that because I just want to confirm that it is in fact the same. So, so that form came from the uh, state historical um, commission. Yeah. And I was speaking to Betsy and Leo, and they mentioned that they want to work to update it just so it's not so outdated. Um, so I think they're going to be doing that. So in the event that they do update that, then maybe we should move to the newer form. But I mean, as long as the information is there, the information is right. Doesn't matter. I don't know how it works, but the uh, we're definitely some treasurer downstairs told us that there are approximately 13 or 1400 properties that would date the construction prior to what we asked for 1900, I think it was. Yes, here in town, right? Approximately half the properties were built prior to 1900. Yeah. Huh. So, if we were to set that as the benchmark, right? Somebody originally, I think, a year ago suggested 1950, which seems awfully late to me. Seemed to get our rounds around the early stuff first. Yeah. Valor, I think. Valor and Valor. So that is document. So a lot of it is document authority, which is good. Um, okay. So the next item on the agenda is kind of related to that, uh, which involve discussing submitting a report to CPC saying that no funds have been spent for the past five years for documenting historical properties because the funds are going to be retired. So um, I reached out to Paul Carey and he said um, that we're going to, or I told him that we'll allow the funds to expire in November. Um, and he said that we can request these funds back through the CPC in the future, uh, whenever it's necessary. And um, Paul asked us to submit a simple report. I, I kind of asked him what kind of, or if there was like a template or anything, but he said an email is fine. So I don't know what kind of, we kind of already communicated it to him. So I guess I'll just send him an email. I guess I'll give myself an action. I'll send, I'll send Paul an email stating that we had a five year term for the CPC funds and we have not used any of the funds. And that's all I really need to do. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I'll do that. So and no funds have been used um, for the past. Okay. So yeah, so like I was saying, those funds will expire in November. Um, I don't think you really need them for anything, um, but in the event that we do, we can always just reply. So it's not, not the end of the world if they expire. Um, well, I think it, it raised the question that we raised many, many months back is would it be worth our while to put together a bigger or to do some research on companies that do historical documentation? Yeah, we could do that. And and I think in private, and I would say it in public, I've even said I think we can find someone in town either as a volunteer or for a very small fee rather than hiring a professional company that's going to take pictures that anybody could take and and get the data from the treasurer's office and fill out those forms and start to document the historical buildings we have in town and create a file for that. 
But if we have this documents already or buildings already documented, are we going to document? Are we going to update the documentation? My understanding is the three historic districts of which 187 homes are documented. Uh -huh. now, Valerie tells us that there's probably 13 or 1400 oh, historic oh, okay. homes. So you're thinking of the ones outside. Yeah, so okay. to continue the documentation process such that if Somebody in North Upton or South Upton or West Upton or wherever said, I just bought this place and I want to tear it down. It wasn't even on our radar screen. It hadn't been documented. I think there probably are historic houses outside the district that have been documented also, but it's not all of them. And I don't know. It's an ambitious project. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's very ambitious. And I don't, I don't know. Um, in the event, so we have them documented and they're, they comply to the form B criteria, but in the event that one of them is going to be demolished, I wonder if we want a more extensive documentation before it's lost. If we want more extensive documentation before it's lost, then maybe that would be the situation or if we want to spend funds to document it properly, I don't know. Yeah, that I mean, that was what it was originally intended for. That was right. why it existed. It existed because we didn't have any money to do anything when they tore down 14 North Main Street. And we just sort of puttered around in there with, with our own cameras on our smartphones, trying to make it a record of what was the oldest building in the historical district or the oldest residence in the historical district. I'm not sure, but it's it's the only like, 18th century house that was in that district and now it's gone and we just sort of had our smartphones to do anything about it um and so that was why we asked for that money in the first place so that's where that's where that money came from that's where it originated from uh, so so Catherine, what are, what are what are your feelings on this do you feel like we sh do you think that those funds should be appropriated again so that we have them in the event that i mean the, the, the idea of it was just so that they're, and I don't know that CBC can do this for us, really, but the idea was that they would be um, on hand so that when we get a demo thing, if it is something that does need to be demolished, that's not um, well documented or documented at all, like you guys said, that we could take care of it instead of you know us all trooping in trying to last minute try and figure out what would be important to take pictures of before the whole thing's bulldozed which was what happened um, keep in mind that we now have the uh, $25,000 fund for that type of purpose or any other uh, you know generally uh, historical work, historical work yeah it, it, it might be that we don't no need it ready. anymore if we've got another pot um but that was that was why we had it so but we came up with a plan of some sort and found a couple of companies that do this work or a couple of individuals that would do this work we could always go back into cbc saying you know hey we need 10 or 15 or twenty thousand dollars to uh, to continue this documentation purpose that's that's my view yeah so so with that being said ahead of time um but with that being said, maybe we should do some research into companies that will do that type of work so we have them at the ready in the event that we need it. Confirm that Form B is the proper form, whether it's going to be updated in the, in the future or not. There's less material, but that's the correct firm. And if we can correct form, if we can find a couple of firms that, that do this work, or like I say, maybe some individuals that would do this work, cost of a professional company yeah yeah it would be good to have those names on hand that way we're not scrambling if in the event that it gets dropped in our life i mean it might be it might be a time to consider going back to the town's people to try and get approval for a proper historic district that is formally documented with the national register of historical properties, not just 
as I said in our meeting last week, a discontinuous, a discontinuous district is merely homes that have been identified, but to say this whole street and maybe there's more residents willing to get behind that effort and support it because of what's going on at the street right now. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I'm actually your question. It's just going to make uh, a suggestion, and that is if you want something quick while you're trying to figure out something professional, you might contact a school that has a, um, a study in media and get them to either do photography or video for you so that if something does come up suddenly, at least you have something. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Maybe even BBT, but I don't know if they would do it. You might be able to get it done at least cheap just for, for the time being. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. I'll make a note of that. Most of the schools have media departments these days, don't they? I'm not sure Nipmuc has, probably not just BBT, but yeah. So, so, but that's a good point, Ed. Um, maybe, maybe we want to think about re, um, bringing, bringing, essentially bringing that same article up that was brought up in the 1990s. Um, to see if we do want to pass that historical that historical district. Yes. Boss. The last one was it was too big. It was too scale big. down a little, little smaller. Okay. The the elephant is the uh, people talking. Uh -huh. A lot of negativity, negative, negatives. And and I think there was some something that somebody said that there's something that wasn't like explained properly to the to the town people about what how it actually worked. Yeah. And so maybe well, we, they thought that we were going to dictate what they could do to the house. Right. That, that's that's what I sort of People get. got mad because they said you can't tell me what color I'm going to be. My you know, I you know I've had people good. say that to me. Yeah. You know. Yeah, because I, I sit on the commission, they said, oh, can you tell right. people that they can't take the right. house's right. color? I said, yeah, we can. Yeah, so people, people don't understand. So yeah, that, that's the big go. thing. I think people need to be more educated as far as the whole process. And I think sometimes even what we're going to, things are getting lost in translation. Um, and then I think, when, as you said, when you start talking about things and the project gets too big, then people get angry. And then it sort of backfires. Yeah, and they have to fully understand. And then they then they sign the sign exactly. paper, then they create the big sign. Exactly. I can well, agree. Into, yeah, they totally agree. They're very afraid. I know. Can't I, blame. I, them. Yeah, yeah. really can't blame. Them. I know. I remember. I grew up in a town. I remember we went to something similar. I what what is the year anniversary? I know. I remember them doing it. You know, again, they did the big movement when it was like you know their hundred year anniversary or. You know, when things were more positive and then things got passed through, you know, a lot easier. Once you said, oh, look, this is, you know, what I mean, you have to do like a positive thing with the whole, you know, trying to get it passed. Look what we're going to do for us here in the town. So. Uh, Patrick, do you have a question? I, I mean, it's just a comment because I know yeah. we're like we're, we're talking about, especially like educating people. I mean, I'll be completely transparent. You know, there are times where I'm confused what constitutes as a historic district. So I don't know if that's something we want to educate people in town, because I know that's a question sometimes on the Mendon Upton moms and dads page. So once in a while, someone will post like, so what does this mean exactly? I mean, especially when it comes to the, uh, uh, the apartment, proposed apartment complex, because that's a question, well, can they build that there? What does that mean? So I don't know if we've ever thought about kind of making kind of like a like a cheat sheet or like a an intro video, kind of like this is what the historical commission does. This is what the historical society does. Because on Heritage Day, while I was dealing with a two-year-old throwing a temper tantrum, um, a lot of folks kept thinking that the historical commission 
was the historical society. It's like, well, no, we're two separate entities. And I think kind of going back to what was being said about uh, people that what's getting lost in translation is what do we do? What does the historical society do? Yeah, I think that's a very good point. Yeah, uh, I find it I find it confusing as well as and especially when you're talking about the historic district for the state and then the national district. That's very confusing. Um, so yeah, that would be that would be great if we could make like a video or something about that and nail it down. You know exactly what the distinctions are. Yeah, Mark. because oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Patrick. Oh, sorry. I mean, the only other point I'd say is, you know, especially if we're looking at a lot of families looking to move to our town and definitely that's probably the first question they're going to ask if they're looking at houses. Well, would my house make it onto that registry? How can I look that up? Is this something I need to look at 20 years down the line, 30 years? So, I mean, it's a useful guide and then it's also it makes our town look good because it's like, hey, look, like we have this set, we can even be that model for surrounding towns for like Menden, Hopedale, and you know, the other folks and whatnot. Yeah. Catherine, did you have any comments or questions about that? Do I have any comments and questions about a, a video showing a distinction? Yeah, or, or just generally about um, uh, possibly proposing um, this warrant article to the town again um, about making. I mean, uh, yeah, I would be I would be pro proposing the warrant article article to the town again. I think on some level um, you could leverage, you know, people's lack of control. Um, not that it would have mattered in a 40B project, but. Um, if people want more control over historic houses in their town or or historic buildings in general, not just houses, um, you know, this is what gives you sort of more control collectively. Um, and without it, we have collectively very little control. Um, and I think that that might be a useful way to to encourage people who are otherwise prone to see it as us sticking our nose in where it doesn't belong um, per the previous time that it, it, you know, was discussed. I will also point out that like the population has evolved in this town since the nineties somewhat. So it might be a different discussion um, as well in that respect. Um, so I'm not sure that you would have the same, I mean, you'd have some of the same fight. Don't get me wrong. That's always going to be the case, but I don't know from the outset if it will be as hard a fight at this point or not. It could be, I don't know, but it is, there are different people here to some degree, um, and certainly more people, um, than there were at the time, as far as I'm aware. Um, but yeah, that's fine with me. I think we would have to, like whoever it was said that, um, we would have to socialize it properly because otherwise it's just setting yourself up for failure if you're not gonna be putting a campaign behind it. Um, and I do I do agree with Patrick that having a video that, or, or something that discusses the difference between the society and the commission and what we can and can't do is just a useful thing. And then we can link people to it if we need to. Um, having an explainer would be good. Um, yeah, video. I'm, I'm just thinking if we could, if we could just uh, have a statement as to what is historical district and what does, or what does the historical commission do and what does the historical... You know society do. And I think that if people understood that, then um, it would be should, beneficial to us. We should probably have an FAQ put on our website because we've had, we have a lot of old content on the website that they just redid. Um, and we've got a bunch of old stuff. And one of the things that we could make to, for them to replace is an FAQ that includes things like 
you know, who are we, what do we do, what can't we do, what, you know, how are we different from the society? And we can also make a video out of it if we want to, but at least then like, you know, the, the basic answers are out there. And um, for new, for people that move into the town, I know my wife and I never received this, but do, do we like provide like a folder with kind of like contacts for the various commissions in town? Or is that something that we've never done? Just thinking like if we have families coming in, like if they go to town hall and they want to learn more about say parks and rec or historical commission, have we ever done that in the past? Yeah, yes. Isn't it on the website? I mean, you can go on the town's website and all the commissions and all of the committees are listed. And then if you click on, it has a little, a little general um, description of what it is and who the members are and how you can contact them. So does that answer your question? No, I, yeah, I did it about 15 years ago. We had a little welcome, welcome bag. Oh, yeah. I, I'd go through the newspaper and, and then get the address of newly, newly purchased houses and call on those people, call on them and explain to them, and, you know, see if they had any questions. And, and I took the uh, business, business cards for any business we'd like to right. add like a Like a welcome committee. Like a welcome exactly. committee. I did that for about five years. But, yeah. And something happened and it doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> yeah, it might be good to be proactive, though, like you're saying, huh? Just a thought. Well, you know what? So, um, oh, I'm sorry. Do you have a question? Or One comment is yes. if you do a video and you're interested in newcomers or people looking to purchase a room to Upton, I'd say put something up on YouTube because if they search Upton, they'll go to YouTube and they'll find out all kinds of things about Upton. Yeah, that's a good idea because people, that's generally what people do is they'll search on YouTube and find yeah. out about it. We Sometimes. can even, we can. We can even get kids to make that video from either Nipmuc or BBT. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Yeah. Because we know we we know this generation is very about themselves and they love to document every little thing they do. So <laughs> Yeah, that's a good idea. Okay, cool. So um I think I think maybe this is it's a big thing to kind of discuss the Warren article and the promotional videos. Um, so I think maybe we don't take a vote on that tonight. Maybe we put it on the agenda for next next meeting and- It'd be good to have a committee that works on that kind of thing. Yeah, right. So maybe we should all think about the past. Yeah, maybe we'll mull it over. Um, I also have the, I did, I did some research and I found the actual Warren article from the 1990s that was Coded down, so I can email that to the group just so for the commission, so that everyone can just review it and kind of mull it over uh, before the next meeting. And then the next meeting, maybe we'll have a vote on it and see if we want to go ahead. Um, okay, so So moving on, I know, sorry, I know we have a lot of items on the agenda. So um, the next one is um, discussing setup of a cloud storage box to help the Historical Commission organize documents and pass documents to new members. A new Historical Commission email address has been created for this purpose, uh, which I created, which is Upton Historical Society at gmail.com. Why is it the Historical Society? Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and not the commission. Yeah. Because I looked at that and I thought, well, that's going to cause a lot of confusion right there. Yeah. Especially when people are asking what this historical commission does <laughs> and what does a yeah. historical society do. Change it. Historical commission Gmail. Yes. Well, I joined last year, I didn't know about that. I told you I didn't know the difference between two. I didn't know if they were. It's confusing. Yeah. 
So I'll try to get the Upton Historical Commission at gmail.com email address. Um, but I was thinking that we could use that Gmail account just generally for the commission and use that to base that um, off of our cloud storage um, space. And I talked to Denise and she reached out to Christopher Karen, who I think is on the technology commission. I'm not 100% sure, but um, he's somehow involved in technology and town in Upton. And he said um, Dropbox and um, he said the options are Dropbox, Google Drive, and OneDrive. Um, so I'm not sure which one's necessarily the best. I was kind of looking into the Dropbox option um, because I'd like something that everyone can, the society uses that and they're 501c3, so they can use that for free. Um, and I, I really, I kind of really like the way the, it works for the historical society because you can just allow somebody access to it and they can they can log in and see all the different files that are there and that's what i'd like to do just give everyone in the commission just access to the to the dropbox and then you can just pop in and see what we have in there and add stuff add the notes the secretary notes so i've watched youtube videos on one drive and yeah, yeah, he's yeah. One, okay. he don't stay away from one run at all costs. It's a yeah. disaster of a, of, a, of a function. I just had a terrible experience myself in the little last nine months. Yeah. Trying to kill it. You can't turn it off. You can't get rid of it. It corrupts your files. Yeah. It's, it's, but I've heard nothing but good things about Dropbox. I've used it on yeah. occasion, but I've never done a, uh, a heavy user of it. So that might be a, uh, the best of the three that have been suggested. I think that's what I was kind of leaning towards. So I don't know if anyone had any other any other thoughts. I know I don't think OneDrive works the same way that Dropbox does. As far as I know, that I don't think you can just like have a, a website and just have anybody log into it and just see a bunch of files. There. That's the way Dropbox works, and that's kind of what I wanted. So um, I don't know if anybody else had any thoughts. I don't, Patrick. Did you have any any thoughts about that, or do you look like you were deep in thought? <laughs> um. I mean, I have to agree with Ed. Dropbox is very user friendly. I know with OneDrive, I mean, it's fine, but I think Dropbox, if we're talking about compatibility, it's a lot easier to use. Also, if you have a phone and you use things on your phone, Drop Dropbox is also very quick and it's very, whether you have an Apple, Android, I mean, it's, it's a lot nicer, I think, personally. So I agree with Ed. Okay, that's a way of meaning as well. Um, the one thing I did a little bit of research, I didn't go too deep into it, but it seemed like if we want to do it as a committee as part of the town, there's a fee associated with it. So it would be $120 per year. That's the one that was the cheapest one that I found, and it only has one user, but I don't know what that one user means. I don't know if that one user can is like kind of the admin and they can allow people to access the the Dropbox for everyone or not. Um, but um, it would be, a, I think there's a fee associated with it. So that's something we would need to discuss and figure out if we, I think it would be worthwhile just because we could organize everything. I think it would be well worth the price. That's a concept of what we would use it for. Explain that. Um, pretty much. I was thinking it would be used pretty much the same way that the historical society uses it, where it's a place where we could keep all of our common forms for like documenting historical properties if they're going to be demolished or have our flyers for the cave for Heritage Day. And there's a million other files. Ed and I and Joan were in the historical commission office a couple of weeks ago and there was tons of files there and, and not to mention the files downstairs in the cabinets. So maybe we want to document those. I think there's like a couple of terabytes worth of space, so we can put tons of stuff on there. Um, and also, a historical society. I mean, historical permission notes. Um, just organize them by by month, and then we have them in, in the event that we have to go back to them and pull them up. We don't have them just stored locally on a computer. Um, Does the historical society already have a Dropbox? Um, Historical Society does have a Dropbox, yeah, and it works pretty good for them. Could we leverage up for that instead of having a separate? Mm, I don't know because there were two separate organizations, so I don't know if Tom would 
you know what I mean, of all of that. <laughs> you might, I don't know. I, mean, I never asked him. I guess I've got, I've got hundreds of files on here already, but the time I've been on here, all the files of the grading, whatever. Yeah, the grange files, yeah. available to everybody. Yeah. Uh, and then my all the minutes and agendas from meetings in the last year. Yeah. And and plus we also have to compile your report at the end of the year. So having all that stuff in one spot would be and we could store our yearly reports in there too. Which would be, you know, some some guys there. You might check with uh, Denise because they might have something for the town. I did, yeah. And Denise Denise gave me those three options. She gave me the Dropbox, the Google Drives, and the Drive. So that's she pretty much they had an account for the town, right? No. Oh. Um she said I think she said that there's an account for OneDrive for the town. Like they can just give you a OneDrive thing, and that would be I think that would be free. Uh, but it's not as efficient like, as Dropbox. I'm thinking you can just like I don't think it's as easy to use. Yeah. So um so yeah, um, is so is that is that something we should we is that something we oh I'm sorry Captain did you have a question? Yeah, I just wanted to see my I mentioned this to my husband and he works um, for a, a nonprofit that's tangential to the state and he just brought up like we should check and make sure there's no um, like document security questions that we're gonna run up against because I know I it may not matter at the local level it may just matter at the state level but he was like you know it would be a big problem if we had like a separate if if for his organization if they had a separate like internal Dropbox that went di that didn't go through like the town servers or whatever um so I just wanted to make sure because he said something like that to me I wanted to make sure that like we checked with the powers that be because I didn't want us to get in trouble after the fact for having done something like that seems innocuous at the time. Because we definitely, we definitely were using our personal drop boxes. When Don transferred the stuff to me, he was like, here's a permission to my drop box. And I put a bunch of stuff on my drop box, you know. So it's not like we haven't been doing it. Don't get me wrong. But um, before we had something more formal, I just wanted to make sure that we checked with the town that that was like an okay and not a violation of anything. It's a good point, Kath, because when I was on the Cemetery Commission, the issue we had was access to the database for all of our cemetery records, and we were not allowed to do anything with that outside the internal town server. So that was an issue. We wanted to, wanted to be able to access it on our laptops and we could go to the cemetery and look up records if we were with the uh, customer. We were not able to do that. Yeah, that's an excellent, excellent point. Okay, Dropbox is only accessible to the individuals you give permission to access. I think it's the same as one by the Google Access has to send out a permission link to someone to access it for the first time. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. You don't just tell somebody it's at this website. Right. That's yes. And this is secure. They are all secure applications. Yeah, but that's probably a discussion we should have before going through. So yeah, that's a good point. And is that something we should rope Denise into and ask her about if there's any security related concern? She, I did ask her, and she, she didn't really, I didn't specifically ask her about that, but she, she didn't bring that up either. So she said that all the different commissions in town use those three options. So. Yeah, and, and it may not be something that's like necessarily come up before because nobody like you know like like I said I mean Donna and I were just using because that's what you used you know um so I, I don't know town commissions don't tend to be early adopters of this sort of thing so it may just not have come up or it may not be an issue I don't know if there's any kind of restrictions on like what we can and can't keep on something that's like you know, not a, a town owned server, blah, blah, blah. So I just, I just wanted to, I just wanted to put that out there as a thing that we should consider and or talk to in case that ends up being relevant so we don't get in trouble after the fact. Um, Absolutely, yeah. I don't know that there's anything to get in trouble about. I just 
I just wanted us to contribute because I hadn't thought about that at all. And he was like, oh, that would be like a big problem for us. Yeah, so the listener fund, people. That's a good point. Yeah, maybe we can reach out to the places that have done something. I'm just thinking about that. If you put those forms, the Nissan 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 but there, there is, it's part of our security. Okay. Back to the same point we're talking about. Okay. And the, uh, the emails are blocked. Can you read it? Okay. And then I get some that come right through and you can read it. Somebody was looking for a place to restore a historic cannon. Is that right? Yeah, well, I got several of those emails and somebody came up with a suggestion of a company that does that exactly. Oh, yeah, I did well, see something yeah. like that. I did? Yeah. I don't even know if I saw it. I'm drowning in it, so I can't read them all. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's table this one, too, and we'll, I think there's a couple issues that we need to think about, and then I'll keep it on the agenda for, for next meeting, and maybe next meeting we'll have a look and see if we want to move ahead with that. So great discussion there. Um, the next agenda item is um, need to put uh, on calendar dates to check the Historical Commission mailbox on a bi-monthly basis. Um, I put this on my personal calendar, so I'll, I'll try to remember to do that. Um, however, it might be good if we could have a volunteer to also do that in the event that you know somebody is out. I don't know if anyone would be willing to check the the sort of commission mailbox like you once a month or something. Can you get in it? I could give you five volunteers that are all within half mile of this building. <laughs> no, you don't need a key. You walk in the front door by Denise and Doc, you take a right. Oh, it's, and it's okay. that first turn of the room right across from the bottom. check it because I go by there periodically to drop my kid off at pre-k so I mean I go back and forth in front of the town hall basically every day so, so who wants to do it so <laughs> you want to do it well, Kathy, so since you're split the duties yeah, yeah I mean, right. I'm, I'm happy to do it we can we can alternate months <laughs> yeah. yeah okay Catherine gets all the months that start with C. Joan gets all the ones that start with J. <laughs> and then Russell gets the rest. <laughs> okay. Okay. Why not? There's no C's. To keep us honest, I think what I'll do is I'll keep an agenda item on the agenda for checking the mailbox just to make sure that every month we've at least checked it once. So I'll check it this month. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll never move aside next month. Let me just show you the, where it is. Yeah. You know what Sanders office is? You know what Sanders office is? Andrew is. Yeah. They're right they across the hall from her. Oh, okay. okay. There's a little coffee machine in the room, and there's slots on the wall, wooden slots. Uh -huh. And underneath them is an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper alphabet, and it tells you which box belongs to which commission. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. I think we're box M, but you can look at the map and it'll say M. Yes, have a better part. Yeah. That's all it is. Right, H. On the historic, no, no, the alphabetical lettering is the boxes. Yeah, yeah, oh. it's really confusing. I thought we didn't have mail for a long time because I was looking under H. It's not H. I think we're, I think you're right. I think we are box M. So. It's M. But there is a M. key against Sorry. the wall underneath. Uh, the 
Because when I get back from my trip at the end of June, I got the letter from the company National Grid had hired to put new metal poles in the power line. Mm -hmm. And we're doing archaeological evaluation. We wanted to join them. And I got the letter like six weeks after it was mailed. They'd already done the work. And they agreed to come up and show us what they did, if you recall. Right. But it was a little late, so. Okay, yep, so I'll leave that on the agenda. And um, that kind of feeds into the next agenda item, which is paving the roadway for the Historical Commission uh, to reply to Mass Dot, which was the reason why I say it kind of leads into that is because this was another letter that we have gotten into our mail office and we need to respond to this. So, um, I read the letter from MassDOT and I wasn't, I'm not exactly sure how we need to respond to them. Um, they, they have a, a map of the, um, the road, the, the course, the roadway. Um, I think it's just on 140 that we need to, I guess, investigate, but I don't know how, what, how we investigate it and what we're looking for. I guess maybe stone walls that are close to the road that might get damaged or, I, I don't know. They don't really specify what we need to look for. So um, I was a little confused about it. Though. The granite curves out here around the common. Yeah. They are historical. Oh, they are? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that might be something. I remember we received a, a thing a few years back from the highway department that they chipped one and they were very upset about it. Is that one? Oh, okay. I didn't know that. So that's great that you mentioned that. So um, I'll make a note of that. And maybe I should just kind of read the. Has, that, has everyone, did I forget if I emailed it out to everyone? I think I got the letter, I scanned it, and emailed it to everyone in the commission. Okay, good. And has everyone had an opportunity to read it? No, it was not rather, kind of, rather vague. It just asked if you wanted to reach out to them. I didn't. Say so you, what do you want to, what do we want to reach out to? There's a paved road. Yeah. Then I they, 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 they tell us specifics about, you know, what are they going to do? They're going to redo the, the sidewalks, the roadway, curbing, whatever. And does this include do, the do you, roadway? Do you know if any of the yeah. asphalt is historic? Mm -hmm. Do you know if any of the asphalt is historic? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, why don't I just read it quickly so everyone's on the same page? So I'll just try to do it fast because I'm getting paid here. Um, regarding Upton Grafton Route 140 resurfacing and related work, Mass Dot Highway Division Project Number, blah, 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 Section 106 Review, Early Environmental Coordination. Dear Mr. Lankless, Massachusetts Department of Transportation Highway Division Mass Dot is proposing resurfacing portions of Route 140 in Upton and Grafton. The project will be supported in part with federal funds dispersed through MassDOT. The project therefore will require review under Section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act of 1966 as amended 36 CFR 800. This enclosed project information is provided to the Upton Historical Commission to initiate consultation with appropriate representatives of the local government in compliance with the regulations governing section 106. The overall project consists of approximately 6.2 miles of road in two segments. The north segment of the project extends between immediately east of the Grafton Upton Railroad Corridor, Route 140 crossing in Grafton to the intersection of Route 140 and William Street in Upton. The south segment of the project extends between the intersection of Route 140 and Elm Street in Upton to the Upton Hopedale Town Boundary Project. Uh, um, I think that's my, well, let me keep going here. The project work consists primarily of milling and resurfacing the roadway. Additionally, the existing sidewalk will be repaired and a new sidewalk parallel to the existing will be added in the Grafton portion of the project. 
MassDOT requests that the Commission review the enclosed materials at the earliest convenience. Commit for comments to Kerry Lavalle, Chief Engineer, MassDOT Highway Division, Boston, and Attention, Melissa Andre. Um, and then there's a map here. Uh, so they said that the, the, the part that's going to Milford will start at Elm Street and go to Milford. Yeah. And the one that on the Grafton side will start at William Street. William Street and go yeah, to Grafton. Grafton. So there's nothing in the nothing there. Yeah. This is Grafton. Yeah, I don't know what road that is. But. 140, oh, 140, 140, we're surfing in, the so it's going to, or that is, Street. Street. West Main Street. Street, so at least it's 140. Yeah. So this downtown project isn't going to happen for a number of years yet. It's a little green. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's Melbourne Street. And I don't know what this red line is. I don't know if that is a The project. That's the. Oh, so it's starting here and there, but it's all along 140. Yeah, so. Yeah. It's Gable Street. Yep. It's probably there. Brook Street. So I can't think of anything along those paths. There's nothing in between. There are no sidewalks. Just from um, just from um, the center of the book street in the side. So yeah, it's starting there and then beyond Brook Street. Is that where they're starting? That's beyond Brook Street. Yeah, I wonder if this might be another one for the list server. Yeah. 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 Should we send this to the list server and ask them if there's anything that they usually do with this type of good, request? Good, good idea. Um, you know, there are sure. historic homes along the way. Think of the, the Oper farm down on the chestnut. Mm. And I think there would probably be some concerns if it was a reconstruction project. It's not a reconstruction. Yeah, it's just a resurface. It's a resurface. So. So they're not really changing yeah. where the road bed is. Yeah, it's like why the road. Yeah. yeah. So maybe maybe we just say, you know, we have a concern about the the historic granite curbing and well then they're not going to go near. Oh, they're not going near. So right. Very good. They're not doing them downtown. No. Okay. So so maybe we just say we don't have any marks. I don't think so. Okay. Like you, like you said, it's basically, I don't think it's you know, taking the top surface off the road. Yeah, yeah. I was surprised that you can ask this. I mean, if you want to send a letter saying yeah. the commission's reviewed the letter and see sure. no concerns with the with the repaving project. If we should have a letter, yeah, just want to Yeah, that works. I think that, that's, that seems appropriate to take Honestly, take up any artifacts. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think they find well, the they're just, like they're just, 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 they do you think we should include well, that? Well, well, this project doesn't include it, so why? Oh, okay, yeah. They straightened out to St. Hill. That was a long time. Yeah. It's sort of interesting, isn't it? The way they're doing it. Straighten that out. Thank you. 
same as the guys in Roman men. What, what is that? Isn't it interesting the way they're dividing it up? Why aren't they doing another section? It has to be a reason. We just don't want them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe it has to be for both of them. Yeah. Uh, That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Yeah. But as that letter was presented, you know, if you want to simply send a letter saying thank you, the commission to do it, we see no concerns at this time, if something changes to keep us informed. Okay, let's do more. Okay, so I just want to keep this going because I know we're getting late here and we have a lot of items. So uh, the next item on the agenda is discuss favorable action for article X which is funds for exterior maintenance of the Rustine building and Boy Angels and Article XI, which is authorization to lease the Knowlton Rustine building. Um, so uh, for these two articles, uh, one I wanted to mention, as you guys probably know that I'm a member of the EDC uh, and I had a meeting with them uh, a couple weeks ago and I, I raised a vote uh, during the EDC for Article X and Article XI to request that the EDC put forth a favorable action for these two articles. So I kind of wanted to do the same thing for the historical commission and see if we were one in favor of putting forth a favorable action. And if so, we could take a vote. And um, and if we are in favor, um, someone can stand up and when this article comes up, we can just say favorable action by the historical commission. Um, so, would someone want to make a motion, or I'll make a motion to. I'm going to play with what do we. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe I'll, I probably still that too. So, uh, we're on agenda item <laughs> 10, and there are two articles up on the warrant for um, Article X, which is funds for the exterior maintenance of the steam building and Holy Angel Church and also Article XI, which is the authorization to lease the Northern Steam building. Um, and there are two separate items, so maybe we have to have two separate books for this because probably can't bundle that together. Um, two different so who brought these articles for? Who, who proposed them? I think it was the Board of Selectmen. And I think they have favorable action for the Finance Committee already. Um, so, um, Catherine, did you have a question? I do. Um, I haven't seen a copy of the warrant, so I don't know what the lease one, uh, the, the one for the maintenance seems um, pretty <laughs> self-explanatory. What can you give me some background on the lease one for um Christine? Like what who are we are we just do we have somebody that we're leasing it to? What happens with this society? What are we doing? Let me let me I have I have screen captures here, so I'll I'll read them. Um article so article XI is the authorization to lease the Nolton or Steen building. So this is to see if the town will vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to lease in accordance with the provisions of MGL Chapter 30B, all or portions of the building known as the Nolton Rustine Building, located at 2 Main Street, shown as Assessor's Map 201073, for such sum or sums, and upon such conditions determined by the Board of Selectmen to be in the interest of the town and to authorize the Board of Selectmen to execute any and all instruments, including leases and other agree agreements, and to take other actions necessary to, I'm sorry, other actions necessary or appropriate to effectuate the vote taken here under or to take other action related thereto. And then favorable action submitted. I'm sorry, explanation submitted by Board of Selectmen um, and recommendation favorable of the Finance Committee. So that's XI. And well, my understanding is that is intended to ask the townspeople if they would approve leasing 
the first floor of that building, although it clearly does not say the first floor of that building. Right. But yeah, it says it's historical society. Yeah. It says leases and other agreements. Yeah. So they had an agreement with the historical society for the space that they use now. Right, yeah. I certainly hope that they're not going to all of a sudden say, well, now we want rent. <laughs> yeah. So maybe, yeah, maybe that, maybe that isn't. So. I don't know how that affects the historical society. Yeah. So my, the, the intention is to at least the first floor to get some income. Yeah, that's, that's the way I kind of understood it when I first heard about it. I think but, the intention was to lease the first floor because I the like mind shop and to expand and they yeah. wanted to get a, well, a first floor. There. And we were thinking that if the Nevermind shop was able to go into the first floor of the Ristine building, then it might drive traffic to the to the museum, but as you were saying, Joan, is there? I mean, that's what we're the intention was, but is there un, unintended consequences that we're not anticipating? Mm. Yeah, I, I'd like some. I'd like some wording as to the historical society. I, I, I think that they didn't want to put specific details like that in it, um, but I, I feel concerned for the society. It's too vague. It's yeah. probably it's probably to leave it open for discussion for anyone who might be interested in space and that building is what space they get and how it's arranged. Yeah, I mean somebody might come in there and say, Well, I'd like to have all those spaces. Oh yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. So maybe yeah. it's better that we don't <laughs> Yeah, I would since those the rooms that the historical com uh society are in is supposed to be ostensibly our rooms uh so i would be uh i think i think it's within our wheelhouse to tell them that we only support it like with the understanding that the historical society gets to continue occupying the space that we've reserved for them yeah that's a good point Catherine. So maybe, yeah, so maybe we should, maybe like you're saying, Catherine, maybe we should stand up and when that comes, when that, when that comes up, well, how would we, would we want teeth to that? Would we want them to make an amendment saying that in yeah. the article during town hall floor or do we, do we just state our concerns and that's it? What are your thoughts, Catherine? Like, are you, do you think we should have, we should try to have teeth to that so that the historical society Three. is definitely throwing space? No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think it, I think it's a thing that we could respond. I mean, they want all, us to support it. Um, I think it's a thing that we could bring up to the board of selectmen in advance, but. I also think it's something that we need to talk to on the floor if they are not going to change the Warren article, which I understand why they wouldn't because they might want to kick out the historical society if it's cost effective to do so, but they don't have any, the historical society doesn't have any place else to go. Um, right. So I, I think, I think it's really unreasonable to not have a guarantee of their continued occupancy in there. So do you think the best course of action would be to email the board of selectmen and ask them to add into this article a clause stating that the historical society will be guaranteed um, a location within the Nultimer scheme building to operate? The upper two floors of the Milton Ristine building to operate. We just lease the first floor. Yeah, and just lease the first. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you could say that the that the historical society continues to occupy their current space or something like that. If you want to just, you know, make it blanket where they are. I, I would. Yeah. I would also. Yeah, I, I'm not sure if the board of selectmen or the town manager would be the best first stop. 
on that. Except Clearly, the town manager doesn't have control, but um, it might be a person to talk to just to see what the, the temperature of this is. Um, yeah, I mean, the email with Sandra Catherine, I think, would be the best because she's the central contact of the selectmen and Joe. So they right. both get. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't see that the selectmen are going to change the language on that. I don't think they want to put anything in firm. Unless they sense or, a significant resistance. And decide that's a language yeah. change prior to but it, and I think it's good that we we put that forth because I think that town there are townspeople that would support that too. They yeah, I don't think they necessarily would change it, but I think it's important to say that we'd like ask them to change it. And they said no, and now we're coming to town meeting to say yeah. this is what they're trying to do. So that at town meeting, they can't be like, well, why didn't you ask us? You know, like. Uh, uh. Oh, we can also say that we can't get a favorable action as to the way it's written. Exactly. So I, I think. We feel that the historical society should. I think it's um, important to try and if we feel then that makes it a different situation. Okay. Um, You're the man of words. <laughs> do you want to, you do you want me to email the board of selectmen with this? Um, I think so. Okay, I think I, that, would be, that that would be the okay. the route I would okay. think well, would be. I, I they were the ones that have asked us for favorable action, right? The board of selectmen yeah. asked us. No. 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 This was this no. That was something that I was. Um, Thinking would be good for the historical commission to do. Um, oh, okay, okay. They didn't ask us. Okay, they didn't ask us. Um, because because okay. sometimes favorable action holds weight to like on the town floor. If, if people right. see that the yeah. committees are thinking that there's favorable action, people more heavily vote upon it. So, okay, so I will take an action item to email the board select me about that, and I'll I'll keep everybody posted on their reply. Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, well, with that being said, um, what about the, the next, um, the next um, article, which is oh, Article it. 10? Let me read that one. Well, I thought it was up to it. Didn't have, Did I you read so. that? It was, you no, know. I am going to do that now. So let's do Article 10. That the state building is such a mess. Yes, Article 10 is funding. Article 10 is funds for exterior maintenance of pristine building employees. You see if the town will vote to transfer from available funds the sum of $200,000 or any, any other sum for the purpose of cleaning and painting maintaining and repairing the exterior speed building and four annuals, including all expenses, incidental and related, or to take any other action related thereto. Yeah, but it says other. It go like that. Yeah, it's I mean, the, other the church needs a new roof, right? Yes. It belongs to the town. We got to maintain it, right? Yeah. Right. Can't write it. So I mean, we, we, I, I support that. I mean, yeah. They, they can't just let that those buildings deteriorate. They have to keep maintain. <laughs> I agree. Um, that's that's my that's my take on this. And uh, Catherine, did you have a I was just, I was just going to chime in and say that we've complained about them not putting money towards the buildings that they have on, uh, you know, on the town funds for years, and so I'm glad to see them actually putting money towards it because it's definitely getting deteriorated. It's got large parts of the like roof fascia that are coming off and stuff like that. So I am very pro this uh Warren article. Okay, yes, I am as well. Uh, Patrick, what are your thoughts? Um 
I, I mean, I, I'm maybe I maybe it's the teacher in me, but I, I, I get nervous when things are not in writing and it's just it just seems when things are not, like the fact that it's it seems really open ended kind of makes me nervous, especially for our society friends and colleagues. So that that that's just where I'm at with that. OK. I think this is going to open can't work on town floor. People go berserk because there are a lot of people that just feel that well, the holy angels should be torn down. No, and we have no question about that. That they're in longer it's a mess, it's falling down. And it's not falling down. I'm just shocked at the amount of money. Yeah. From all the discussions that are running and spending, you know, a couple thousand to repair a hole in the roof. So all of a sudden the months Put a quarter million dollars in. Right. Hmm, just. It's the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do. But I, I think that a couple hundred thousand people will go crazy and say, just tear it down. Even if it's like right. 10 to 15 years after the day, if somebody comes in and expresses interest to do something with the building, we've saved the building. And, and I look at it that. Those two churches facing each other on the common are absolutely worth saving for the, the center of this town. Mm -hmm. It's the only thing you've got. You take those down, got the town hall. Right. That's it. Yeah, it's going to look awkward if there's not a couple of historical it's buildings. Yeah, somebody who's on the commission that's left, that they talked about the common and they said that those are the anchors of the common. Yes. Yeah. And there's steam building and the town hall. Yeah. That makes the common. Yeah, it's like a triangle. Yeah. 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 So I, I I personally think that it would be good for us to put forth a favorable action because I think that what you had brought up, Joan, there, there's a lot of people in town who are saying, let's just tear them down. Um, I think those people, if they see that there's a favorable action from the historical commission, my second guess, I mean, they might hold more weight, I guess it's more of my thoughts. Um, so should we, all, should, I, should we put forth a vote to see if the historical commission will put forth a favorable action for Article X, Article 10 um, to preserve the funds? Okay, I make a motion that um, we um, make a favorable action um, comment on the Article X funding for the exterior. Did you get to take that all? <laughs> um, you, you have a use list. Where is it? She used so okay. okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I hope you cleaned up the words a little bit so it made sense. Basically, we, I want people to vote on whether or not we should do this. Favorable yeah. action for our blocks. And ours. Okay. Uh, second. Second. Um, all those in favor? Uh, we'll do a roll call. Um, Craig, aye. Ed. I'm going to abstain. Abstain. Patrick. Um, I'm going to abstain. Yeah. Catherine? Is this for the, I missed it. Is this from, for um, the Knowlton Ristine? This is for, um, Joe made a motion for favorable action for funding the $200,000 proposal for exterior maintenance of the Knowlton Ristine and Holy Angels buildings. Okay, yeah. Uh, um, yes, I'll vote yes. Okay. Russ? I vote yes. And Joe? Oh, yes. Okay, so is that enough to pass it? Okay. It passes by majority. By majority. We voted. We voted. We voted. Catherine voted. That's four yeses. Okay, so that passes. Two vote favorable action for article X. Okay, wonderful. Um, next agenda item is to do we need oh, to vote on Article 11? 
Uh, I think we were kind of saying that you know, you, you're, you're going to contact the board of selectmen and ask them if they could modify it for the historical society. So I don't think we want to go on that yet. But once we get feedback, for it doesn't come until May, right? Where May. Yeah. Two weeks away. So and with that being said, the new website for UptonMass.gov, it's very. I don't. I think the warrant article got wiped off that website. So if anybody wants the, so far, I don't think it's sealed in stone yet, but uh -huh. um, if anybody wants the warrant articles. I was having something. trouble getting these tonight. It's a new. Yes. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. It got, I, I didn't request the Chinese that were yeah. close to us. Okay. So. And it's hard to find because it's not a calendar. It's like you have to search on the exact date to find mm -hmm. stuff. But, um, so if anybody wants the warrant article, I have it. Just reach out to me. I got it from Mike Lantanels. It's not actually on the website anymore. So if you need that, just reach out. Um, okay, so on to the next agenda item, which is to discuss special meeting minutes concerning the 57 Main Street 40B project. Uh, Jennifer Doherty, Mass Historical Commission uh, Historical Survey Request. Um, so for for this item, um, well, I'll say for this for this item uh, after this meeting tonight, I'm going to submit uh, the comments from the historical commission to the board of selectmen, the CBA, and Michael Antonella. So I'll, I'll write it up um, after this meeting, depending on what we discuss, um, and. We had our special meeting on October 4th to discuss this. And the comments that we've compiled so far are um, there is concern about the size of the building and it will disrupt the historic look of the town. There's another concern about historical houses, foundations, flooding. And then, so those are the two. Two comments that really kind of brought forth from our special meeting on October 4th. And then um, since then, I've received a couple of additional comments. One is um, that the trolley, the trolley uh, through Upton used to go through this property. So that kind of plays into the fact that maybe there was some sort of historical um, not some building, but a historical, I guess, railroad track that went through this property. Um, and another comment I received was that there are um, astrological stone alignments that um, Kathy Taylor had pointed out, and she pro provided me um, pretty extensive image images um, of the of the walls and the the alignment, the astrological alignment, she drew kind of like a map for me um, of how it's pointing um, as far as like north south and how it aligns to the sun and things like that. And um, and I think she may actually want somebody to come in and take a look at that as well. Uh, she had mentioned a, a person who is an expert in this area, but I'm, I'm not familiar with that person. Um, and so I just wanted to ask if there's any other comments that we should be including in this letter. And also, um, after we discuss that, we'll open up to guests tonight um, to see if they also have any additional comments. And I'll collect whatever comments we have, and then I'll compose the letter tonight and send it to the board selectmen, ZBA, and Michael Antonellis. So I'll open it up for discussion. Um. We might ask that um, the developer um, pay for the. Uh, didn't we talk about this when we were doing a elevator over there landing, and we had um, those experts come in to map out of the stone structures and everything and then we talked about the fact that you know we in the future we should ask the developer to pay for those types of things I mean, okay. we we 
don't know for sure if those are actual um, stone structures here on this property. Um, but, you know, we could have an expert come in and look at them and, you know, give their thoughts on that. And I, I don't think they're significant stone structures, um, the ones that were up on Governor's Landing. Mm -hmm. There were some that the developer had to change the plans of, mm -hmm. you know, his uh, roads and where he wants to place buildings to make sure that those would be um, lost. Mm -hmm. Were those affiliated with a set of curiosity with anything to do with the cave? Because after I read that whole, you know, there was that whole special on the cave, I was sort of surprised how the stone structures were dispersed. I, I you know, again, reading as a just a person, I thought they would be all closer together. Mm -hmm. I was surprised how far away they were from each other. I, I know that the cave and the things up on Pratt Hill, Pratt Hill yeah. have a connection. Right. But the ones up here on uh, Governor's Landing, that they didn't were that. I don't know if they had anything to do with the cave. Okay. But I, I just wondered if you got those. Thing that it did. They seem like when I read this article, they had those experts looking at all the different areas. I just wondered if they ever looked into this area because I was I was shocked. It seemed like distance what they were talking about, how far apart mm -hmm. that was. And the on this property that we're talking about for the 40 feet project is these stone walls are, um, you know, just two lengths of. You know, stones in one direction, stones in another direction, and, and wasn't there one in the middle too? I don't, I don't know, because I know I know stone walls are on my property. What Kathy um, yeah. plotted on a yeah. map, it shows one going north south, and right. the other one going toward sunset. On mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. Yeah, how they do it. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. Oh yeah, I, I have them here if you want to see it. I didn't bring it earlier, but um, there's. She also sent me another really interesting thing today, which I think I don't have on this uh, top. Oh, about the trolley. Yeah. No, um, about you know, a well that was actually on the property, but it's like it's a primitive well. It's. Um, did you see that picture? Uh, uh -huh. um, you, you guys can. If you guys want to see what I'm talking about. I don't have a way to. Well, I don't. You do have that. So, Where uh, is, what location was the well? Just out of curiosity. By, it's within that area. Whose house? Do you I know? Don't know. Where, I just have a bottom, picture of it. Top of the hill? I don't know. Oh, okay. Has that shot a picture of it? Because my kids always said there was something sort of weird back there. I just, I just wondered. Yeah. You know? It's, it's, it's like, I couldn't tell. I mean, from the picture, maybe it's like this big. And it's like a, a, a wall of stones that yeah. kind of go down into the water, and it looks like it's a spring fed well. Okay. Um, it's kind of cool. Yeah. Um, I don't So, yeah, so I guess this is the 40B area. This is yeah. Main Street, I guess, and this is the. It's close to Main Street. Oh, is school? So, oh, it's it's yeah. so, this is the right. um, the old station is down on Station Street. Right, yeah. They, they, and um, the fact that there's the lines that are two north and south is kind of interesting. Railroad depot yeah, it, it, here. Yeah, right. the other way. Right. 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 But yeah. we have oh, a trolley yeah. right oh, yeah, yeah. here. Yeah. 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 See, yeah. 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 from the map, yeah. it yeah. looks yeah. like that trolley was down to I have a hate it. Yeah, yeah. 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 and then yeah. 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 so yeah. yeah. the yeah. 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 The director at the society, and he yeah. said he wasn't aware of that either. Well, that Rick Benaco told me something about the, you know, he's away for, um, but um, keep calling him because I know he mentioned that to me. I got to keep that picture about the trauma.
about the trolley. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, I mean, been been here. And there's empty table. Oh, okay, yeah, back then, yeah. She was a the chair for the Yeah, yeah. Okay. Mine probably here. Oh, you love that? Yeah, right here. Oh, okay. So you have something for Mr. George Borrow. He owned all that land. Oh, really? Yeah. And what did you just say? Because he mentioned that it was wet. Was the terminology they use. Oh, okay. No. Oh, because he lived right up right behind me on School Street. What? I know you mentioned that it was really wet, but you used it some other different terminology. Where you lived on School Street, because you lived right behind me on School Street in that White House that they just redid, correct? Yeah. And you mentioned in your last meeting something about the water behind your house. Was there uh, no behind the the, uh, the funeral home? Uh, okay, you so mentioned something about your your house when you're on School Street. I have no. Yeah, no. We, we had we had a, a drainage ditch. A drainage drainage ditch. Right. The water came off the off the hill there. Okay, it, it did it flow? And then it went, did it flow through your property? Uh, uh, did it flow through your property? Yes. Because then they redirected that water. It was the water redirected? She said redirected. No, no. It goes behind those those uh, three houses there. On, let's see, two, two houses. Excuse me. Two houses. Two houses in, in between. Uh, <laughs> the last, there's another house. There's a wooded area, and then there's the house that's right next to the Grange. Right, so there's the green. That, that's, that's 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 what, what, those two that's houses. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My uncle filled that all in. It was all, it was all swamp. He filled it all in in, 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 the, in the 1950s. We put the greenhouses up there. Who was your uncle? Russell Russell Wood. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 That was those two houses. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, you know, so he filled that in. He filled it all in, yeah. Wow. That's all wet. Right, because I again I'm right behind your old house. Yeah, yeah. And it does it's get it seems like it's sort of coming back up quite a bit. You know, it's all wet. My house is behind the woods is all wet. It's all wet down. Yeah. 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 yeah those houses. So well, I was wet in that one section. Well, I have standing yeah. water. Never water before you. Yeah. Yeah. I told you I have broke those. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Uh, Mary Kennedy. Yes, Mary Ellen. Yeah, you yeah. still is. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have a question? Yeah. Yeah. I actually have a comment and a uh, question. I didn't know if you could share with us, uh, Craig, your screen on what the stone walls were, it sounded interesting. I just couldn't, I didn't know if you could share them with us. And two was last night we were at the planning board committee and they said actually the property between the Grange and this 47 Main Street is a flood zone by FEMA standards. Okay. And, uh, and I, can't, I, don't, I can't share because I don't actually have the yeah. image until my computer, I think. Oh. Um, but so you're saying that there's a flood zone between um, the range and this 47 Main Street property, which is where true, Chris yeah. says he was wet. That's what we were just talking yeah, about. Yeah, right. Yeah. But that's but according to FEMA, um, what was the gentleman's name? Tom Davidson yeah. said it's technically rated as a flood zone, and Mary Overholt confirmed that at the conservation meeting tonight. But just an FYI. <laughs> that's yeah, I think you're right. That is very wet in there. It's essentially a small. Um, Catherine, did you have a question? I just wanted to tell you that I did write up based on uh, last um, last week's meeting. I did write up a letter. I sent it out earlier um, as a, earlier today, just like during the very beginning of this meeting, actually. Um, it's in a it's in a word document form so hopefully you can add anything you want to that 
awesome. or whatever you want. It should be in your email. I sent it to both of them, I think. Oh no, I sent it to the historical commission email. So if you don't have it in your email, let me know and I'll send it to you directly. Okay, that's fantastic. So that'll save some work. Um, did, 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 did that have, did your letter have, I think we might have to put like the official historical commission um, logo on the top and all that. Did it have? Yeah, it was, I'm, I like reverse engineered the letterhead from the agenda and I corrected the footer. So it, it should be right now. Cool. Well, thanks for doing that. That's a huge help. Um, okay. So, um, so right now I have the four comments um, about the size of the building and the historic, how we ruined the historic look, the concern about the historical house foundations and the flooding, the trolley property and the um, astrological stone alignments from Kathy. Is there anything else that people want to include um, in the comments? I can't put anything else. Marcia, did you have something? Well, there's been a lot of controversy over the fact that that property is not in the historic district and it's not on the National Register, but I do have a picture of it if you want to say it. Sure. And, and for the flooding, all the dots show different historic sites. So the pink, according to this, means that it's in the National Register. The little arrow points to the lot. And if you notice in that lot, uh, it's not divided. So that had to be, that's the whole piece of property. So this is the 40, this is the 40 feet here. Well, no, the, here. Oh, it's here. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, so it's going along. So it's piece. this yeah. piece in here. Yeah. And what's this orange? That's the road, Main Street. Oh, this is, this is Main Street. Right. The red oh, okay. Oh, okay. 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 It's confusing. So this is the 40 feet here. That, this is. That not, yep. This one. And part of that might, you know, the chemical might be, is that the chemical might be, I can't tell. Mm -hmm. But if you see all the dots there, you can see how many historic um, structures are going to be affected. Oh, so where is the actual distribution being? Oh, it should be here, right? Oh, so this is like the board. Do you know what the explaining is? Yeah, it's the land that starts over here at the driveway and will come up and around with the road. Yeah, but this is for scanning right here. Right. So it's it's over here. Yeah, there should be a, a lot more houses. So the right. here. Is this where it came up on is because this yeah. is where the bend of the road. Oh yeah, and the funeral home on the bend of the road. Yeah, right. and this would be the funeral home and this would be the, the entrance for that property here. So I'm thinking it's all of this. Yeah, it, it's great. Not the last yet. Yeah. And these are the types of children on school street. Yeah. I thought it, it, oh, no, well, maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, this is the end. Yeah, this is the main lane. And they said that the, 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 the road would come in this way and go behind the main lane. Uh -huh, yeah. But it's going to go over it, real, very it. close to uh, this. Yeah. Because it's going to be behind like uh, uh, Rick's house and uh, his rest of the Oh, so like over here? Well, that's what I thought that meant. Well, this is part of it. It's like square. That's part of it. What's that? Let's see. Well, look at this. So this is where this is where the exact model goes. So this is the funeral home. So that red is the historic district. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, it is. This this is the USGS site map. I'm separate. I printed it out so small. So this is the And the funeral home is like around here. So we're thinking that this 
this square might be this, yeah. maybe on your map. Maybe this this little piece of this. Is this here? So this is here's yeah. this. Right. Here's me. Right, because this is where I am. Yeah. And then so this yeah. is the bottom part of your map right here. Right, exactly. Right here. Yeah. So it isn't. Well, I think it's part, part of it. Well, in this map, it, I have a different map, but it's not from. It's from the. Uh, so this is the historic district. Is that what you're telling me? I think we're taking the credit. Yeah, we're not. Yeah. This is all magic. Yeah. But now, so you know, it's the big nice strategy and trench area here. So it would be like this part. Mm -hmm. So maybe what we say is part of the development is in a historic district, because that's what it looks like the map is showing. The, mm -hmm. the first part, the back part is not, but the front part, front part is. Really? Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. And that's is that, is that right with right. Right. pictures. Massachusetts, Massachusetts, oh, Victoria. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think Fred has computer. Thank you. <laughs> so all it's kind of crazy. It's a very accurate. No, no, I really to see. Yeah. Is in the National Historic District. For a. So I'll add that comment. Okay. okay. I was just pointing out all the dots, though, because <laughs> if there's plotting, there's a lot of historic homes that are just being just to clarify, that's not on the National Register of Historic Places, that's on the Massachusetts Register of Historic Places. There's a significant difference between the two, as I understand. But that's the National Register of Historic Places. Pink. Yeah, but it's the Massachusetts. It's it's they, their site is confusing. I went through it with the Grange. Mm -hmm. So is the is the pink part um, national or is it state? I, I think I, I'm going to say the same thing I said a week ago. There's only four properties and often listed on the national register. Right. 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 I'm all not the same. District is a state. Yeah, everything else is listed that, on the. That's the not district. true, Ed. And I just oh. talked to them this week. All it's right. Not true. Yeah, I just yeah, talked to the National in. Park <laughs> Service this week, um, yeah. and they confirmed that it was added that the district was added to the National Registry in 2015. I have the emails. Um, they said the reason why that and the conservation or um, the camp, the CCC camp, are not. The, the documents are not on the website, even though they are listed in the spreadsheet on the National Park Service. And I asked them why that was. They said that there, um, there was a portion in the archaeological section that had been deemed sensitive by the state. And so they don't provide it on their website to the general public. You have to contact them um, because there was this section. I want to see if we can get the redacted version that the state has available on the National Park Service website. I'm not sure if they'll be willing to do that. Um, but I did confirm with them that the, the, the Upton Center Historic District is on the National um, Register for Historic Places, as is the CCC camp. Both of those are also, they're, they're on their listing and I spoke to them directly about it. Um, but it's they don't have the like inventory files available on their site in the same way that the state does because they have different ways of handling what they consider sensitive information. Interesting. That and, and is that uh, Catherine? Did, is that written up in your letter? Because um, I'm not sure I would know how to phrase that the way you, said, you phrased it. What that the that it's that the historic. So, so this property, 47, um, 
part of it is in the, the like the interest is in the delineation for the Upton Center Historic District. Um, but it, it's you, not a contributing property. No, I didn't. I didn't talk about it because because it wasn't one of the two points that we had come out of the meeting sure, last yeah. week with. Um, okay. And and because it's not a contributing, at least a, according to what we put into the National Registry application, it's not a contributing property. Um, they didn't right. even talk about it at all. Like they don't they don't list that as a lot. Um, okay. So so there wouldn't be anything to say because in according to the historical like application, all the information for that inventory, that property has no historic value according to the National Register. Right. Um, so like, I, I don't know that, I don't think you would want to like necessarily pull that in because if then you looked at the historic register, it's going to be like, there's nothing here about that property. Okay. So, so I kept it more general about- you speak to uh, I can forward you the, email if you like uh, absolutely would like it yes uh, did you speak with someone from the national register is all i want for the minutes yes i did let me let me pull it up hold on national register i'm trying to get the unredacted copy i think there's probably one in the vault um but I, it wasn't in our i went to the town hall and poked around in our files and while i did find the actual official one that was submitted it's it's redacted it doesn't have the section that they referenced. Um, so I spoke to Rustin Quaid at the National Register of Historic Places. Is I I I can send you directly his um his email. But yeah, they say it was. The Upton His Center Historic District was listed on the National Register of Historic Places on the 14th of January, 2015. I much corrected. So, well, I mean, now we now we know, and I did, I wasn't understanding why why it was on the state website and not on the national website. That was very confusing. So at least me understand more now since none of us except for maybe Russ were on the historical commission at the time that this submission was done I didn't join till 2016 so I didn't know either that there was like a redacted version and a regular version yeah it's very confusing yeah I think so it's I, probably I, worth it's probably worth mentioning that the 40b is in the National Historic District and it's on Macris um I don't know how much it adds value, but I think we can mention it. It's I not mean, we can hurt. say it. It's, it it's, is, it's, yeah. It's, 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 um, will they yeah. ever show it on their website, Catherine? Well, so they said, so here's the thing. They said they didn't, they don't put it on, the, they're showing on their website in their inventory. They have a big inventory spreadsheet, and it is in there with the date and all that bit. What they don't let you do is they don't let you click and look at the full inventory record. And the reason they do that is because instead of putting up the redacted version, which is what the state does, they just don't provide it at all. And you have to reach out to them and they only give it to you if you're like an eligible researcher by some parameter that they didn't make clear to me. Um, my next question, once... Once I read the, um, what I want to do is I want to find the unredacted version. I want to find the original version that has whatever the objectionable thing is, um, because it might just be that they mentioned the Upton chamber. Like that might be the big, the big secret that's sensitive and, you know, it might be Native American sites, but for whatever reason, it's something that they, it's something Native American because they said it was under archaeological. Um, and that whole section is cut out of the one that we have in, in our regular files. Um, so I think it might be the Upton Chamber, it might be Pratt Hill, whatever. Whatever that was, because it was like Native American, um, made it sensitive enough that they had the redacted version on the state one and they didn't show it at all on the national one. Um, I want to see if maybe they'll put the redacted version on the national site because 
it's so it's so frustrating and i wish we didn't include it at all because um it means that all the stuff that's in that upton center which none of it like like the upton chamber isn't in the historical district so like nothing has uh yeah. Yeah. any kind of um interaction with the actual historical district if it's in that archaeological group but it's about like pratt hill or it's about um, something that's on elm street so i'm frustrated that it's keeping it off the um national site if um you know if it's not something that's actually relevant to the district in question but i can't make them put it on there if they don't want to put it on there if they only want to make it available to like qualified researchers quote unquote um so you know i can't do i can't do anything about it if they don't want to if they don't want to put the redacted one on there um but i will ask them once once we know what what's redacted i'll ask them if they're willing to do that um the other thing is we can just link directly to the macros one but we do have it is on their full spreadsheet of all of the national register sites and it is you know a bona fide national register site so as is the CCC camp, which has the same situation. Both of them are are listed that way where they don't show the inventory. Great. Well, uh, Catherine, if you could, would you be willing to take an action on I think you kind of already did. Uh, yeah, I mean, I basically like volunteered further. myself for this action item, so that's fine. <laughs> okay, awesome. Because I know you already kind of dug into it a little bit already. So if you could, yeah, pursue that. I'd be interested to know what they say for sure. And especially if the cave is supposed to be on the National Register, uh, it would be good to know if that's the thing that's Well, that's the thing. It's not, it's not supposed, the Upton Chamber isn't part of um, the National Register. Um, it's not. Yeah, it's discontinued. Yeah. But it's not, it's not part of the, um, it's not part no, of the Upton one Center. Part of the right it's the only one in the country like this, a two piece of property, but they're not connected. Mm -hmm. It's a, dis a discontinuous, discontinuous historic district. Oh, it's a discontinuous district. Okay. Well, in any case, yeah, if you could dig into yeah. that, Catherine. I, I don't, yeah, uh, yeah, this is my action. I got it. Oh, I'm sorry. But I can um, confirm, I can confirm that all four of the sites that we thought were on the National Register, um, both the town hall, um the, you know the town hall the hat factory the upton center historic district and the ccc camp can confirm all four of them are national um register of historic places district uh sites so and i okay. have the dates for all of those and the reference numbers for all of those fantastic yeah, that's great um yeah that's wonderful thanks Catherine. um i see someone soup uh guest uh has a question I think you're muted. Hi there, my name is Sue Perry. I am at 24 Hazel Tyne Road in Upton. And I just have a question uh, for the Historical Commission. There's a sign that's placed um, heading towards um, uh, the, that, the property 47 Main, and it's placed uh, uh, after the Memorial School, and it says something to the effect of entering the historic distri district of Upton, something to that effect. It's an old metal sign. It's patinaed and, and green. I, I, I imagined that I saw it, but then I saw it yesterday, and it's there. And it says to people that come to this town and to people who live in this town, that as you're walking down that street, as you're driving down that street, that sign is a historical um, a declaration that you are entering the historical district of Upton. And if you're entering the historical district of Upton and this house and maybe the house across the street and the house over there, those ones are the only ones that are historic. Well we're entering the whole district the whole district take a look at that sign and um if i'm not mistaken that's what it says that i just wanted to add that thank you so much yeah that's a good point so yeah the, there are that is that's i've seen that sign 
And there are other signs uh, throughout town that uh, designate the historic district. And I believe the historical commission, before I was a member, um, put, put, put forth that effort to- Yes, historical yeah, commission put those signs up. Yeah. Yeah, we just put those signs up like five. I'm sorry, I was just gonna say, we just put those signs up like five years ago, maybe? Uh, yeah, it's something like that because it's, I think it was like 2017 or 18. Don, Don did it. So that was, yes, I that was one of it. his projects. Um, but yeah, so they're, they're not super old and there are four of them. They, um, they are at like the four of the major intersections as you come into the historic district, which, which was what we were talking about, um, and covers a lot of main street, um, you know, between just at in the town center and on North Main as well. Um, so let's move on because we have, I don't, we have a bunch of agenda items. I know it's nine o'clock. I don't know. I don't want to keep people too late. Um, do we have any updates for the Grange building? We have an update for the Grange. We had a uh, architect submitted the bid specs to the State Historical Commission at the deadline on August 31st. I think I reported this last month's meeting and we had no action since uh, several emails trying to motivate the architect to move the project forward and meet the original um, proposed schedule, which was bid specs completed sometime by the end of the month of September, out to bid the month of October, contractor selected month of November type of thing. Uh, we're now on uh, a commitment to finish the bid specs by the end of October, such that it can go out to bid in the month of November. Uh, although he expressed a concern with that, that uh, asking for three months price protection won't protect us for work done next April, May, and June. So I said, there's a simple fix, just change the wording in the bid that the pricing has to be held through June of next year. I haven't got a response, but that's where it's at. Um, I believe the state is preparing the contract and the preservation restriction that will be sent to the Grange for approvals. Uh, I don't have a timeline on that, so hopefully by next month's meeting, we've got significant more progress and details. If that ever gets done, it's going to be a miracle. Yeah, yeah like it's all through because our paid architect doesn't meet the schedule. But there's still plenty of time. I mean, it's because all the work has to be completed by June. Yep. Yeah. And the work's not going to start until probably April anyway. So, Rick. Okay. Oh, that's about it. Okay. Um, the next item is um, social media updates. I don't know, Patrick, if you had anything. Uh, updates for that? Um, nothing really a big note. I mean, the one thing uh, that I know I'm keeping an eye on in light of what's been going on in Israel right now, we are seeing an influx of a lot of uh, misinformation on social media. So definitely, and I know this has nothing to do with what's going on in the Middle East, but I know definitely we're seeing an influx of a lot of just uh, misinformation, things that are fabricated. One thing we really should start looking at, and this could be a discussion offline or later in the year, we're definitely seeing a rise of AI basically creating posts. So artificial intelligence is starting to kind of post things. We're seeing CG created images of just town related aspects. All that stuff is starting to come to the forefront. And definitely next meeting, we can kind of talk about what those proactive steps we can take just to make sure we're ready because the future is here. It's Skynet, it's Terminator, it's all of those things. So Yeah, yeah, you could keep us surprised with that, Patrick, uh, and we'll we'll definitely delve into that. You know, Elon Musk took away the people that were getting rid of lies and misinformation on social media. He just disbanded that part of his company, so. Oh, really? <laughs> so, yeah. Say anything you want to say. Um, he, 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 
he yeah de definitely what ed was saying is i know uh elon musk believes quote you should be allowed to say anything and right now as we're seeing with the conflict in the middle east people are taking video game you know footage and passing it off as actual footage there even there was a post that was going around saying the prime minister of israel uh was hit by a, a missile even though that's completely false he is alive and well but the fact that this is becoming more uh, rampant. Not to say that will affect our small Massachusetts town, but just know we just got to be vigilant. That's kind of it. Yeah, for, right to the people in the Middle East, for sure. So, um, okay, well, thank you, Patrick. That's wonderful. Um, and uh, 300th anniversary Upton updates. I don't know if no updates. Okay, that's an easier. Something like that. <laughs> 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 okay um now quickly um i know um so topics not reasonably anticipated in advance i know um, ellen and patrick have been in communication to discuss possible educational opportunities uh that would include the ccc camps the friend of Upton state forest and the historical commission um i've let ellen know that whenever um, she's ready to present the possible educational programming, um, she can go ahead and do that. I suspect that, that she is planning to have an agenda item for the next historical commission meeting. So uh, I think she's gathering materials for that now. I think it will be wonderful to have um, younger folks in our community get involved with historical aspects of town and just kind of, um, you know, um introduce younger folks to the history of Upton and get them kind of started thinking about that at a younger age um and get them involved somehow i think that would be wonderful so um so we'll we'll expect aspect um updates from from ellen on that next next uh next meeting and patrick did you have any thoughts concerning that that you wanted to address now or? uh nothing of note right now i think right now uh, we've we've started that dialogue and I'm excited to see where that goes with Ellen. I am as well. Yeah, I think that will be wonderful. Um, I'm excited for that. So that's great. And then I only had one more uh, update. The CM RPC has grant money available for the cemetery and the historic building restoration. Um, I reached out to CM RPC to ask um, if our warrant article passes, which we're giving favorable um, action on uh, which we voted on tonight uh, if we could use matching grant money to contribute to the restoration funds so the money available through cmrpc is only ten thousand um, dollars but that that doesn't mean that um we shouldn't still apply because ten thousand dollars to ten thousand dollars and uh as ed had kind of mentioned the the um the ask from town is two hundred thousand dollars to repair the the church and the uh, and the and the scene building that's kind of a hefty sum. So I guess in theory we could part of the Warren article says two hundred thousand or any sum. So in theory we could ask maybe maybe if the town says no we don't want to pay two hundred thousand but maybe they would be willing to pay ten thousand and then we could get a match in CMRPC grant. That was just something I was thinking about. Um, so it might be worth mentioning during the town hall if if that would would be something uh because i just think it would be very favorable for us to have an article pass for any amount because it shows that the town appreciates these two historic buildings i i would just, even if it's like dollar i mean I, I would like this town to show that they appreciate these buildings and they're worth saving i guess is my thought so um so two hundred thousand ten thousand whatever um i think it would be i think it will look on the other on the flip side of that i think we'll look bad if it doesn't pass because that's kind of the town saying we don't care about these historic buildings so um that was something i was thinking about so um you have any idea what the application looks like yeah. no oh sorry yeah. for the states yeah. it was a ton of work okay I uh, recall picking up one of the local flyings in Uxbridge four or five months ago. There was an ad in there for the North Smithfield selectman 
looking for um, people to submit their resumes for grant grant writers, right? Because there are numerous grants out there, and you need someone who's experienced to write them. Right, I've done I mean, one before. A lot of money available, but you you've got to fill out these. So ten thousand dollars might not be enough to make it worth the effort. No, what's the application? The application says send a two page, two paragraph letter. Great. Okay. okay. If the application is thirty eight pages long, requires all kinds of documentation. Ten grand's not. Okay. Because so, it might be, what do we have to do to get the application to see what it looks like? Okay, that's good to know because I am. Admittedly, a neophyte in this area. I've never applied for a grant before, so I don't know the process. So, <laughs> okay, so that is all I had. I know it's late. Um, is there any other? Uh, uh, yes. One thing I'd just like to say yes. is thank you, everyone. You have been wonderful. And Kathy, the work you've done is really appreciated. I really want to thank you uh, for everything you've done. Yes, I, I definitely concur. Catherine's been going. Oh, thank you. You guys are great. Thank you. Not only that. We don't often get accolades. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely concur. I mean, he, and, it's, and also the Heritage Day work that he did as well. So, yeah, we really appreciate it for sure. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm already here. Did you see that? Yes. Okay. That's the one I think I got to do this last week. Um, I think that's from the Mass Historic Commission on uh, grants that are available. Oh, okay. I've seen two or three in the last week, the one that you were talking about, plus one or maybe two others. Well, this one's an aluminum and vinyl siding on the store filling, so it might be for interesting. Interesting. Okay, so. Yes. Yes. So, are, are I think we are we adjourning? Are we adjourning? That's not the one. It's numerous organizations. Yeah, for sure. Presumably yeah. offering the grant. Okay. And uh, here's a grant here. Mass Historical Preservation, NPS, Save America's Treasures Grant Program Accepting Applications. National Park Service grant is offered by the National Park Service and is not administered or affiliated with the Mass Historical Commission. Um, they have $26.5 million available and will be competitively awarded with dollar for dollar the non-federal matches required. This could be either cash or documented in kind services. So I thought that was interesting. In kind, you get a volunteer to encourage the digital projects. Uh, application is due by December 19th. So I've seen a couple in the last in the last week or two. Okay, that's good to know. Um, I have small children. I got to put a bed. Put to bed. So. Okay. All right, Jim, go ahead. I, I make a motion that we adjourn. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you, ladies, for coming. Uh, thank, no, you. thank 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 you.